man, the blessing was so much more than the birthright. The blessing is what God called him to do. What God said is going to happen in his life. But Jacob took it from his brother. So in Genesis 32, it says, After he sent them to the, across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. The man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask me your name? Then he blessed them there. Man, as we struggle, we get labeled. Jacob got labeled as a liar, as a deceiver, as a thief. But you know what? That didn't stand in God's world. God wants to change your name. And as we've all struggled, we've all been labeled by other people. But God doesn't care about what other people call you. He doesn't care about what, he does care what we're going through, but he doesn't care that we are struggling. He wants to bless you. He wants to save you. But we need to give our struggle to him. We need to say, you know what, God, I'm wrestling with my flesh right now. Man, Lord, I just want to get on my knees. I just want to surrender this all to you. Take this struggle from me. And he will take it no matter what you're going through. In this story, Jacob has been labeled all these things. He stole from his brother. He stole everything. He lied to his father and ran away. But you know what? In the end of the story, God said, you have struggled with humans and you have struggled with God, but I'm going to build my nation out of you. God wants to build his nation out of us. He has called us to go make disciples of all nations no matter what you're going through. Because he doesn't see you out of your struggle. He sees you as a son or daughter. And that's what he sees Jacob as. He sees, man, this is my son. No matter what you've done today, he sees you as your child. He wants to rename you. He doesn't want you to define yourself as the labels of what you were before Christ. He wants to see you as the label you are after Christ. So man, as, I, as the band comes back up, I want to finish my story from earlier. So... We were without income for three months. I quit my job, and we were just trusting that God was going to give us something. So every month, I told Bri, I'm going to go back to my job. I'm going to go back. I don't think there's any church out there that we, can, that we can make it to. We've been waiting for three months. And so we got a call from one of our friends, and he said, hey, there's this church in Marcy, New York. And man... We were living in Missouri, and as bad as the heat was, man, the heat's nice. And so they called us about this church in Marcy, New York. And so I told Bria, I was like, man, I don't think that's where God wants us to go. But we, we, I got on the phone interview, and Pastor Susie Ann called me, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked. And man, I was struggling for three months to not believe that God was going to ordain a church that I was going to be at. I have no degree. I have very little experience in youth ministry. But God had a plan for my life. And what other people have told me is, you know what? That not degree you don't have, you're not going to get a church. No one's going to hire you. The very little experience you have, no one's going to hire you. So I struggled with this self-inflicted label that other people told me and not trusted what God called me to do. God's got a calling for your life. He's got a purpose for your life. And as much as we struggle, he wants to get you to the top of the mountain. He wants you to get there. He wants you to get to the peak. But we look at the height of the peak and we sit down. And we say, you know what? I can't do that. But Pastor Susie talked to Pastor Mike. And Pastor Mike, they texted me like 30 minutes later. And they said, hey, we want to set up a Zoom interview. So I was struggling with this self-inflicted label that other people said, and you said, and I said to Bree, I think we should just turn it down. They're not going to give us the job. Obviously, no other church would give us the job either. I should just take my job back. So we took the Zoom interview, and Bree and I fell in love with Pastor Mike and Susie. And I know I say this every time I get on the stage. You guys have the best pastors in the world. You really do. Pastor Mike and Susie believe in this church. They believe in you guys. They believe in our community. 
And we fell in love with that. And so they said, we'll pray about it and we'll see if we want to bring you out for a trip. So I told Bree again, they're not going to hire us. Why do we even think about this? It's not going to happen. And I was thinking about all the labels that people called me, but I didn't think of what God blessed me with. 30 minutes later, they texted me again. Hey, we're flying you out next week. Next week, are you free? And we said, yes, we're free. They flew us out the next week, and that Sunday we accepted this position. And Bree told me every single time, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. And we just need to trust in that today. No matter how high you've gotten up that mountain, and no matter how high you've sat and said, I'm not going to make it there. I can't do it. God's got a plan for your life. No matter what other people call you, or no matter what you call yourself, it does not matter. God sees you as your child. And God's going to get you there. 